Hey guys, welcome to part 10 of this Godot Flappy Bird tutorial series. So in this tutorial, we're going to just start by hooking up our player in such a way that we can start incrementing our score and also just looking at how we can change signals to work in a bit of a different way to what we're used to so far. So I've introduced you to the very simple basic way of doing it. But now what we'll do is we'll actually introduce a bridge design pattern, which will then bridge our events or our signals between different nodes in our game. So for that, we'll use a singleton design pattern. If you are familiar with programming architecture, the singleton is a object which uh, lives within our program and can only be used uh, by using its single instance, which was created. It's usually only one of that may live in your game or your scene or your program at one time and generally it's a globally accessible so what we'll do is we'll set all that up in this tutorial and then hopefully by the end of this tutorial we will be completely done with this game and this tutorial series as well so guys uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel yet uh, please do so now and hit that notification bell because this will not be the end of the Godot tutorials and other game development tutorials. I will be making a lot more of these and um, I'm going to start looking at uh, creating different types of games rather than games that are well known like the Flappy Bird series. Do let me know in the comments below if uh, that's something you'd be interested in or would you rather prefer this clone type of style tutorial series uh, that I'm creating at the moment? So let's uh, get into this. So what we're going to do is we need to, first of all, uh, set up our obstacle because what we need to do here is when our player swims through this area, we need to allocate a point or add the score of the player. So to implement that, I'm going to add a new area 2D to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to this kinematic body 2D and I will explain in a second why it's here and not in the obstacle. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a child node and I'm going to search for area 2D. Add that and then I'm going to add another child node called collision shape 2D. And then we're going to go over here and create our new rectangle shape 2D and I'm just going to size this and then move it into position over here. So that should then more or less detect our player when they swim through here. Try and make this as tight as possible without actually touching these regions. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect this up so that when our player exits this area it will then count the score because I want to be sure that our player has actually cleared the obstacles and then we allow to give the player score otherwise if we added the score inside of here and they die then they would have received a point um, which they were not allowed to get so I'm going to do this on exit so do that uh, by going to area 2D, uh, clicking on node, and then we're going to create a, a signal over here, and we're going to use body exited. So I'm going to connect that to obstacle, and it's going to open up our script now. But let me first explain why I put this under kinematic body 2D. So the issue here is that uh, while we're moving these objects towards the player, this uh, area over here will stay behind and then the player will never be able to get into this area so the player will be hovering here and this would be moving along but this area would not be so that would be if i had to allocate it to obstacle and if i put it under this kinematic body 2d it will move with this body and move towards the player as well so otherwise we'll just never be able to detect the player so you might think that uh, that's uh, quite stupid because now the obstacle node will stay behind 
And uh, you would be right, but this was the easiest way of achieving this and the most logical way of structuring it at the time. You can go play around with this any way you like. But uh, for all intents and purposes, this does work. And uh, there might be an issue where when we do remove this from the scene that this obstacle stays behind. I'm not 100% uh, sure how we remove this obstacle. I don't know if it was just the kinematic body 2D, so the obstacle will stay behind. Um, so that is something you can look at uh, on your own. But for this tutorial series, I'm just going to keep it basic and uh, keep the structure for now. So that will then move this across there and then we can detect our player. So what we're going to do now is just uh, go in and go modify our script. So I just removed something there from something I was experimenting with. Don't worry about that. So let's go into our script now and start playing around with this. So this was in the obstacles uh, script. And here what we're going to do is we're going to emit this signal, but I don't want to do it from within this script. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this code here. And I'm going to go and just type emit signal increase player score for now. So for now this is going to give an error because we are not actually calling a signal that exists. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create a singleton which is going to hold our signal for us and we can then connect it via different nodes within our game. So this singleton will make these uh, signals global to everything and everyone within the game and then we can come and connect it up to our UI. So what I'm going to do to do this is I'm going to just right click over here and create a new script. I'm going to call that signals just to make it very clear and as to what it actually is. And then I'm going to open it up, get rid of all of this and I'm just going to define the signal over here increase player score and then to create it as a singleton we will click on project project settings and then we will make sure we are on the auto load tab click open click on signals and add it so what this will do is it will create an instance of signals and there will only be one in the scene and it will be globally accessible to us so here it says singleton and enable so that's all we need to do for that so you can close this so now to make this emit work correctly we need to go over to obstacle again and we need to type signals dot emit signal just so that godot knows we're looking inside of signals for this signal that we're emitting Okay, great. So let's just give this a run just to see if everything still works, doesn't break. Okay, it does. So now what we want to do is we want to actually start creating the connector so that we can go and increase the score of our player. So here I'm going to just create a new script again. And I'm going to call this the score UI. And we're going to attach this to our label in our game scene over here because that's our score. So I will just go ahead and in the score UI script rather extend label and not node. So what this will allow us to do is to have access to something called set text, which we can then set our score with. So I'm going to just get rid of that, get rid of this get rid of this and first thing we're going to define in here is a score variable so we're going to make score equal to zero initially and in here we need to go and connect our signal so I'm going to call signals dot connect and we're going to use increase player score and we're going to apply this to self because we will create the function which will handle the signal inside of the script then I'm just going to call it increase score. And then finally, we will just create increase score. 
and in here we'll just increment our score by one so plus equals one and then we'll just go and set it self dot set text and we need to make it a string so i'll use the string function to convert it and now we can set the text so let's see for the label have we attached the script so just make sure that you attach the right script this has got game that's wrong we need score ui so attach score ui to your label let's just check a few things uh, the area is there that's there have we connected it correctly let's see uh, it's been connected to the exited so let's give this a go let's see if it works uh, we'll just keep an eye on the debugger over here to make sure that nothing's going wrong so let's try not to die and you see it's increasing the score it's oh okay let's just give it a another go to see if we can get it to two found that it's uh, quite challenging because the player is a little too close to the obstacles maybe what we need to do is just move the player back a little bit just about there that's maybe a bit more reasonable to balance the gameplay right that's one Let's see what else we can do to so you can see your score is working and the death is working as well so if you die and you can restart and it's looking pretty good we've got the bubble effects and all of that going now as well so very nice so there you've got it you've got your flappy bird clone in godot so the only thing that's a bit different now is obviously in flappy bird the bird falls and tilts but we are swimming underwater so we don't need that you can try and add that if you like, um, even though it would be unnatural, <laughs> unnatural for a fish to just uh, do that, but up to you. But, uh, guys, that's the end of this series. We've gotten through it. I hope it's been useful, and as you can see, it's already here. It's in the view. You could just go and build this for your Android or iOS device and then play it there. But guys, there's going to be a lot more of these uh, tutorials and things coming very soon. So uh, do subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications so you can find out about more tutorials. And if you did like it, this uh, whole video and this tutorial, please do hit like below as well. It really does help my channel to grow and for me to be able to make more tutorials. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Cheers.